Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about culture of your company. So if you have employees, culture is absolutely important. If you don't have employees, well, maybe you still want to hear it because you may have employees at some point. So if you're in business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Company culture is huge, and I think that people sometimes miss the mark. Now, everybody in business, we all, if you're hiring, you know that there's a, I don't even want to call it shortage, but there's just a, there's a lack of people who want to work or people that you can find or people that you want to keep. So right now, we need employees more than ever, right? We need to have employees stick around and it just has to work for everybody. It's kind of the the the, the principle of the, the matter and as far as hiring in general. It's cheaper to keep them than get new ones. I mean, same thing with customers too. But with employees, there's only so much that we can pay right? So in your window cleaning company, you know, prices have gone up, everything has kind of gone up. So you're charging more, but there still is only a small piece of that that you're breaking off for the employees. I mean, you have to do the advertising and you have to do the SEO and the website and everything that comes with it. Everything that comes with keeping a business afloat, feeding the monster, getting through the slow times, it all comes down to you. So there has to be a certain cutoff for pay. Now, if you could somehow pay them $100 an hour, that'd be great, right? But there just wouldn't be anything left for advertising and marketing and and insurance and everything else. So what can you do? Well, it all comes down to company culture. And I've talked about this before, but I think it's really, really kind of important because sometimes people are focused on the wrong things when hiring, right? I know hiring always sucks. I work with a lot of people who are, their their biggest pain point is the hiring side. And hiring in general is awful no matter what. So the less you can hire, the better. But you're also kind of stuck, right? If you're hiring, you think that it's a pay thing and that's the main part and then you kind of go into everything and you know in that ad you go and you put, you know, uh, must not do drugs, show up on time, have your own vehicle, you can't be late. Yeah, ha- like, those are all things that just make your culture of your company seem like it sucks. Really does. And if you do it that way, I know, I'm sorry uh, that you don't like that. Go ahead, um, jersey at windowcleaner.com is my email. Send me your angry email about that. But the thing that people sometimes miss is we get so jaded, right? It's like, It's like a dating ad, you know, you could tell somebody who is, you know, older in the dating game and they're just like their list of demands is all, all they put on there. And you're like, well, this person doesn't sound fun at all. Right. It's the same thing with hiring is, is that I, as somebody who's looking for employment, know wherever I go, I will be paid. Now I know there's a little bit of variance between the two. It's not drastic, but I know a good paying job, there's thousands of good paying jobs that are all in the same thing. It's it's not necessarily the pay. It's the culture. It's the do I want to do this thing. And work is work. Like You've heard that if you like to go fishing and you become a charter, you hate fishing eventually. It becomes work. It's still work. Work is something you have to do to do the things you want to do. And it kind of sucks. So making that suck less is what really gets people there. And company culture, when it comes to the hiring side, is huge. It's the selling yourself. It's the why I want to work there. It's not just a pay thing, right? It's more than pay. It's what other things come onto it. Now, when you build a job for somebody, they're going to come, you're going to trade hours for money. That's the bear, right? It's like, If somebody hires your window cleaning company, you're going to clean windows. That's the bare minimum. That is what will happen. It's the understanding, right? But what makes you better than, I have to move my chair. What makes you better than the other um, 
window cleaning companies. What makes you unique? Why does somebody choose you? The experience, right? The cleaning is there. The cleaning is always there. Just like the pay is, will be there. So at a certain point, you're capped. At a certain point, they're not really looking at that. They're looking at what makes it fun. Now, we work outside. There's bees and there's wasps and there's thorns and there's dog poop on ladder rungs and there's heat and there's cold. There's a lot of things in our business that we do that doesn't necessarily uh, translate very, very well. So we have to make up more than pay. The more than pay part is the why. It's the why. Think about this. If you're creating a job, why would you work there? What would you want in a job if you weren't doing this? What would you want in a job? And that's different for everybody, but that is your culture, right? I'm a huge fan of not being micromanaged. I like the fact that, you know, as a business owner, I can kind of do the things that I want to do. I can still ask people for their opinions and help as far as employees and things like that. But I like the fact that I could do what I have to do. I like that routine. So for me, that's how I like another job. If I wasn't working for myself, that's kind of what I would be doing, right? So maybe the micromanaging thing, maybe, you know, your um, after work activities, maybe the office or the shop or the warehouse. I've talked about this before is I had a stocked fridge all the time because when the techs would come in, they would grab bottles of water, they would get their jugs of water, they would get, you know, sodas after work. Uh, we had uh, about half of them, we'd have beer in there too. So when they were all done, they'd come back, they'd have a, a beer and kind of hang out. And, you know, if that's what you like or not, it doesn't matter. That's what we did. And that's what I found that they liked. They had an environment. Most of my employees, my average employee was there six years. That's pretty amazing. We always had a little bit of rotation, you know, and some of the people were only there maybe two years, but... I can't tell you other than an instance of maybe two times where somebody was there a short period of time, three times. And one, the guy was like five foot one and he wanted to see if it would work. We gave him a chance and kind of both agreed it didn't work. It just the height thing. He didn't really like it. He, he, he just didn't feel comfortable with it. I said, absolutely. You know, a couple of them were just for those other ones, but it was not the reason for that they didn't like working there. The freedom of working for you could be awesome. They may have their own truck. They may have a allowance for lunches. They may have, you know, paid lunches. Maybe you you're not making them punch out for lunch, you know, in their drives they're getting food or whatever, right? We did food on Fridays. After every crew was done, we'd meet at one of our places that we bartered for food. We'd all sit down. If you wanted to go, like none of it's mandatory, you know, hey, I got something to go on. Cool, cool. But we'd all say, hang out. Some people would stay later than others. We'd just hang out, have some food, talk about the day, talk about everything else that's not work. It was cool. We had a ping pong table. We had ping pong tournaments. I had DJ equipment and, and instruments. Some of the guys played music. We had a second floor that overlooked everything and there was instruments and DJ stuff up there. If they wanted to, to play or do whatever, they could. Like having that environment is valuable. Think about the Googles of the world and the Amazons, not the warehouse, but like the corporate stuff. You always see this out there is to get the best talent, you create the best environment. Yeah, pay is probably great, but pay alone doesn't, you know, they're able to take naps during the day or play foosball or whatever they're doing, right? You've seen the stuff, maybe taking it to an extreme, but if you want the best talent, it has to be the best place to work. It will always suck. There will always be work you have to do, but it's the culture of that company. That's the part that changes. And that's the part that people don't convey, especially with hiring. I mean, look at the ads. Just go, if you're doing this research, we've nerded out already, go in to like an Indeed or a uh, Monster.com, any of those things. And just search for window cleaning jobs, maybe nationwide, all their states, big cities, search it. Search just jobs in general, labor jobs. Read it. Must have valid driver's license. Must actually show up to work. You know, you can't do this. You gotta do this. You gotta do this. To apply, click here. And then people go, man, nobody's hiring. 
I don't want to work there. You've already made it sound like you're just a, a ball busting, super strict, you know, awful place to work. I don't want to work like that. I don't want to have somebody hounding and then everything I do get yelled at, right? Don't hire me for that. Hire me for me. So in that same side is if you can create a company culture, which a lot of people sometimes miss the guy, you know what? They don't care about that. Absolutely do. Not only do they care about it when they work for you, but they care about it before they work for you. So if you're having trouble hiring, it comes down to the ad again, but it's the culture side. You haven't told them why it's amazing to work for you. Do you get paid? Yeah, so don't put that down. Of course they know they can't do drugs on the job and they have to show up on time and they have to be able to drive and don't tell them all that stuff. It just sounds like you're hounding them already, right? It's, it's, it's the culture of the company that makes it a place people want to work. And that's, that's the interesting part that people sometimes really kind of miss is that culture stuff. They think, well, what is a culture? Why do they need culture? Like they come here, they work, like it's good. I don't yell at them. They can do that. Like you don't really focus on the culture. And by the way, I'm going to jump off. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. And I'm who's sponsoring this podcast. My name is Jersey and I want to be your rep. So if you haven't yet, please do let me go ahead and put your orders in. My number is 862-312-2026. All you have to do in checkout, there's a little button literally right above the checkout. It just says, save this cart. If you click that button and text me at 862-312-2026 and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. My cart number is this. I literally could do everything else. I put it in, verify the address, make sure everything's cool, throw in a cool kid sticker usually, and I get credit for it. It costs you nothing extra, not a penny more, and it's a virtual high five. It's like a thanks, man. I, I dig the show or the podcast or the content or the whatever, and I wanna help you out, and it does. So please let me be your rep, everything big or small. I wanna put all your orders in. It's amazing for all of you who do that, so thank you. Um, if you haven't yet, go to awcmag.com, again, the window cleaner magazine, um, or the American window cleaner magazine, the window cleaning magazine for the nation or the world's longest running magazine for window cleaners that's ever been it started in 1986. It's full color. It's every month and it comes to your door like clockwork. Also comes with a free sticker sheet every single month that is custom stickers for window cleaning. So Get a subscription to that. And listen, you're nerding out right now listening to a podcast. Why not go on YouTube or click my link tree? Go on YouTube and just subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's just Jersey underscore nation. It is uh, a new channel. So I have a whopping 380 subscribers and I want it to be super big. So take a couple seconds to do that. Anyway, back to the content. I got to do the shameless plug anyway. But a big piece of the company culture is respect. So I think that if you're micromanaging too much for your employees and you're not giving them enough kind of freedom, some people thrive in that and some people don't. I like to think that I should give them more freedom than not. Most people like that. And that's kind of a respect thing, right? If you hire somebody, and I know when they're first new, you have to kind of make sure they're in line with the things you need. But they have to be doing certain things you ask them. If they are, leave them alone. You've hired them for themselves. The company culture also says I respect you enough to have some bottled waters for you, to have a cool environment, to have this low key thing. Now, listen, there's a difference between being nice and being a pushover though, right? Kind and nice are different. Hey, if everything's going awesome, I'm going to be kind, right? But when things hit the fan and affect me or my business, I'm not anymore. So you can't let them, you know, be pushovers because of this. But the environment up until that point has to be amazing. It has to be something they want to do or enjoy to do. And I'm telling you, as far as somebody who's hired, gosh, I couldn't even tell you how many people. I've hired a lot of people and fired a few too. But piece of that is that 
almost everybody that I've hired, I say everybody that I've hired, is more looking for why do I want to work here? I mean, pay is pay. But you have to think of why they want to work there. People don't sell themselves in their company as much, right? They think of, well, I'm paying them. They should like this or do this or work hard. That's not it. Respect is something that's free that's given. Free to give respect. But it pays the most dividends because people aren't always giving that. So the respect side of it always comes back to that. And one big thing when this all comes in, especially in hiring and what you're building and what they're doing and everything, you're not finding clones of yourself. As much as your brain says, you know, I'm, I, I want a clone. I, I want somebody to do what I do, how I do it. I want somebody to come in here and they don't do it like I do it. I mean, I have to be there because eh, my customer. No, you don't. You don't. Up until this point, people really like you and that's maybe why they use you and like you and, and continue to use you. But there's another person they're gonna probably like. If you're good at hiring and you're finding the right person, you're gonna have a person that they like just as much as you. And the new people won't even know you. So it's not the you, it's the people. You're not cloning somebody to be you or to do exactly what you do, how you do it, and when you laugh, and what you're, they not, they're not there to be you, they're there to be them, which is always gonna be different. So when you're looking at this culture and you're like, well, you know, I want somebody to be just like me and this is how I would do it, you own the business. Creating the culture side to them, making it an enjoyable place to work, making it a place that doesn't feel as much like work, for them, will get you a better person. Will get you somebody that may stick around, that may, may continue to do what you're doing. Window cleaning's tough. I mean, if you're in a cold climate, you're gonna have some suck coming up, right? If you're in an ultra hot climate, you've just got out of some suck, right? There are days when you earn it. There are days that they earn it. Or manual labor. Manual labor is tough sometimes. Sometimes it's easy understand how tough it is. Make the other side of things easy. Listen, I can't change the fact that sometimes you have a tough job. What I can do is if you're on a tough job and I know it's gonna suck, I buy lunch and send it there on the job site so you guys middle of job site get some lunch, right? Maybe I drop off Gatorades or Pedialyte or whatever, right? It's gonna suck. You're gonna earn it, but I'm gonna to try to make it suck a little less. That's culture, that's company culture in general. I mean, I could tell you every time we had big crap jobs, I showed up during lunchtime with lunch. I just always did. With refills and coolers of cold stuff, I just did that because I knew it was gonna suck. And eight hours of suck, by the time eight is, one hour builds on, to the hour two builds on to hour one. Hour three builds on, hour four builds on, and by the time eight hours goes, it's just, man, this sucks. But if I can break it up a little bit and be like, hey, you got four hours of suck, bringing you something, kind of giving you a little bit, chill, let's take a second, you know, how's it going, it's going good, yeah, you guys, are, okay, cool, you're all relaxed, cool. Well, let's get it out, man, we got four hours left, you start the clock over. Stuff like that means you respect them enough to do that kind of thing. It's a little itty bitty thing. Like when people say, well, I can't do this culture stuff, you know, I'm kind of tapped out, I can't spend any more, like, it's bull. You have a little bit more, but guess what? If I buy you Jimmy John's and bring a couple bottle of waters, what is that, 10 bucks? If I give you $10 for the day as like a tip, hey guys, this day really, really sucked, here's 10 bucks, they'd be like, what is this? Understand it's not the money, it's the idea, it's the respect that they get. Culture is all about that, which is very interesting when people think that, you know, somebody works for me, I pay them great and they're gonna love working, you know, uh, 50 hours a week with, you know, in the middle of summer and getting it in when the sun, like, they're not, right? Some people like that, some people don't. 
But what they're going to do is because they like the job, they don't feel like it's a job. Sometimes you can do the suck. It's like a marriage in general. Sometimes you got to do something in a marriage that sucks. I just had to take family photos <laughs> on Sunday. Well, my wife doesn't watch these, but it's horrible. I hate doing that. I'm standing there and oh, I'm going to fake smile in a field bugs all over. They were full photos. I was wearing a sweatshirt and long pants and it was like 80 something degrees out because they're fall photos. Sometimes <laughs> you have suck, right? And you have to look at the whole thing and go, yeah, okay. I don't like taking family photos, right? Maybe you don't like doing something in your life. Oh man, it's book club or we're going to wine tasting or, you know, we're going to go watch their favorite contemporary jazz band. But guess what? The whole thing's okay. You're more willing to do the suck because you love your spouse. And you love your marriage. You love the bond. You, you have that. In that same sense in business, gosh, this is going to suck, man. We got the, the, the one, two, three building. Man, uh, every year I, I hate the one, two, three building. Well, yeah, let's get it going. It's going to be two days of crap, but we'll get it. Like the mindset of that, because everything else is there, changes. If it's always that building and it's always something sucky and you're always working 10 hour days and you can't get away, that's burnout. People, man, I hate this job. I hate my boss. I hate my, if you hate everything, it's not because of the work. It's because of the culture. Culture is everything else. Long term versus short term when it comes to hiring is the absolute biggest thing. Because I am going to spend money to train someone. I'm going to spend money to have an employee be as knowledgeable as I want them to be in my specific company. I spend money training them, which if you haven't hired yet, it's so much more expensive than you're thinking. But I spent money to hire them. I've spent money to train them. I've lost money to train them. I've lost money getting them up to speed. They're there. I spent thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars to hire a person, right? Maybe I had to get a new truck and I got everything's great. The headaches are off my plate. They're taking care of all those things I don't want to do or can't do or can't dedicate the time to do. They're taking that off my plate, right? If you're working on your business, you're not working in your business, you're not out there cleaning windows. If you're out there doing other things. So now you hire somebody to clean the windows, they're taking that off your plate. They're doing those things to free you up to do other things. If that is the case, it's so much more valuable to keep that person than to retrain. So long term is always key. When you look at hiring as a whole, you go, oh man, getting busy, I'm gonna have to hire more people. That's only, you, you may have to hire one or two more people only if everybody else stays. Understand that if everybody leaves right now, you don't have a business. If everyone leaves, you don't have a business. Now you're going to try to go do multiple crews worth of stuff to kind of catch up and it's one person now instead of... That could be detrimental. It is absolutely more important that you have them than they have you because they could stop with you and go apply for jobs on the drive home. Understanding that piece of it, understanding that they could go anywhere, is part of that. That's that long term. That's that creating culture and creating a place that people want to work and give part of that because it doesn't feel as much like work. They go, okay, well, I could go over here. They pay me another dollar an hour, but but then I'd have to go into a whole thing and now I'm working in a cubicle. I don't want to do that. I'm like This is cool. Like It's chill. I like it. Creating the company culture side of things is usually missed because it's one of those pieces that, you know, doesn't bring you in money directly. And people kind of go, well, you know, I bonus my employees. Well, cool, that's money. I already told you a $10 sandwich means something. $10 in their pocket doesn't. Now just do that. Okay, I've done nothing for them for six months or 12 months, and now I give them a tip or like a bonus. Cool, thanks. You've done nothing for the rest of the time. So that means every day for a year, I got nothing. And then one day I go, hey, here you go. Just think about that. Bonuses are cool. I, I, I like that concept. But think of the rest of it. 
creating the culture where they're always getting something cool, like they know that you're on their team, is, is that part of it is what keeps people long-term versus short-term. Long-term versus short-term when it comes to employees is not because of the economy, is not because of Amazon up the street because they're hiring more than you. It's not because you can't pay. It's not because of, it really comes down to respect. It comes to respect and it comes to culture. Now, if somebody's going to school to be a lawyer, they're doing this, they're going to school, they just passed their bar, uh, a law office called them and said, hey, uh, you're doing this, right? Let's not use lawyer even, nursing, whatever their degree is, they've gone for all this and they're going to that, you will lose them to that because that is what they want. Again, culture, if I went to school for being a nurse, I wanna be a nurse, right? But for everyone else that's there, having a job that they don't feel is like work is key. Again, if you like to fish, you become a charter, you hate fishing. But if you become a charter and it all works like it is in your head, man, I get to just go hang out on the water every day. Everything's cool. Every person is awesome. Uh, you know, every customer pays right. You know, we're on the fish all the time. Think about that. Whatever it is that you like, what's your favorite thing to do? If that became your job, think about what that looks like. I love the outdoors. I want to be a ranger. Oh, in your head, you don't think about paperwork. You don't think about littering or any of the other little things you have to do. It's like being a cop. Like you're, oh man, it's gonna be so exciting. People respect me because I'm, blah, but you don't think that you spend four of your eight hours doing paperwork and you come in on your days off to go to court and you just, that's what makes it work. The good stuff is what makes it fun. If I could be a charter, and by the way, I don't even like fishing, but that just comes up because I know people who have done that. But if I like fishing, and every day for me is as fun as when I go out fishing, again, the experience, the culture, if I'm just hanging out, it doesn't feel like work. If it doesn't feel like work, I won't dislike it. If you like what you do, you like more than the, the job itself. That's you in what you do right now. If you're a window cleaner and you like it like Steve-O, loves cleaning windows. He likes the act of cleaning windows. Great. But he also works for himself. He doesn't like working for somebody else. He doesn't like being told that he's got to be here, here, here and rushed and done all this stuff with the... He does it exactly how he wants and he likes it because he is the only one that creates it and he is the one that makes the culture. Somebody who could be standing right next to him in another company hates window cleaning. Man, I don't like this job. Why? Because it's a job. It's not the culture side of it. So culture's missed as a whole. If you wanna keep people, you wanna be easier to hire, I'm gonna give you a tip right now. By the way, I'm gonna give you this tip for free. In exchange, go subscribe to my personal YouTube channel. Not the WCR one, do subscribe to that, but go to Jersey underscore nation on YouTube and subscribe. Do that, do that right now. Here's the tip. If you ever wanna have more people apply, you change your hiring process, right? The, um, the job posting to not reflect what you want, to reflect what they want sell the job to them full benefits 401k that's cool put it in there that's not why they're hiring because the other jobs got full benefits or the other jobs got a 401k or the other jobs got a why they're working there is the culture you have to make that clear it'll help you in hiring it'll help you in keeping people it will help you in absolutely everything change it to sell them why they want to work there why they want to work there not the work not the pay not the facts. Give them the opinions. I'm telling you, it'll absolutely change. Last guy I worked with, um, he's getting like six something, maybe six, six people applied in a three-week period. We changed up the application. He got 86 people in a three-week, actually in a two-week period because he shut it off. 
That is because of how he was talking. Telling people the culture, why you want to work here. It not only helps you in hiring, it helps you in keeping and retaining. It keeps you being an awesome place to work. So company culture is super, super important. If you haven't taken some time to think that, think that through. Think it through. I'm telling you. Anyway, my name is Jersey from windowcleaner.com and shameless plug again. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com and I want to be a rep. Clear and simple. Please let me be that uh, 862-312-2026. There's a ton of you who will be like, I got a question. They ask me, I just put an order in yesterday and, and man, I love the podcast. I've been listening for years. So there's people listening to the podcast right now that don't put their orders in through me and I want every one of them because I'm selfish. Uh, it's how I exist, so please let me have that opportunity if you can. Uh, and go get the subscription, uh, awcmag.com, the American Window Cleaner Magazine, the Window Cleaners Magazine. Go get that, and uh, like I said, subscribe to my YouTube, because you know if you see any of my social platforms, TikTok, YouTube, they, they like get you at a certain level, and they're like, ah, we're not gonna give you any more. I've been stuck at like 1,500 followers on TikTok for like six months. Go follow, like it, do it all, but more importantly, go change your company culture, focus on it, but before next week, go out there and be epic.